In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It is so good to be with you this morning. I have had the pleasure of preaching here and being here before, and it is good to be back. And I bring you greetings from our Bishop, Bishop Marianne. It's also very good to be here to celebrate Antigua and Barbuda's independence. I was there on the day I was a teenager back on November 1st, 1981, and I remember the celebration quite clearly. I did see an Antigua flag out here before. <laughs> there it is, there it is. Almost brought one, almost brought one. And I'm also glad to be here on All Saints Day as we remember all the saints who have gone before us and we, the saints of God, because we are saints of God right now. And we stand on the shoulders of the saints of God who have gone before us in this place and in many other places all over the world. Our gospel has some good teaching for the saints this morning. Not easy teaching, but some good teaching. And I've got to admit that I struggle with the Beatitudes, as we call them, especially the Beatitudes from Luke. Because Luke, unlike Matthew, didn't just have blessing. Luke has woes. So after you get through the blessing of the poor, the blessing of the hungry, you get woe to you who are full, and woe to you who are laughing, and woe to you when people speak well of you. And when I stop and think, I go, hmm, who is included in those woes? And I realize that I, am in those woes. I live a good life. I have enough to eat, a roof over my head. What am I to do with those woes? What is it like for the people listening to Jesus, saying out loud, woe to you, and realizing that they were included? It's hard. And I want to share a story from a time in my life when woes were coming at me and at others. Just to make sure you really get the feeling of woe. It was back in Antigua, I was growing up, I um, was doing my advanced level subjects, and those are two year course after high school, very much like community college. And I was at um, Antigua State College, and one of my challenges, my mother was one of the teachers there. Not easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Other people have this experience, yes. <laughs> and um, it was a Friday afternoon, and we were doing what was called general paper. A general paper is kind of that liberal arts course that they make all the freshmen take, you know, they teach you critical thinking and how to present an argument, and you deal with contemporary topics. And the teachers would take turns, we'd get guest teachers in, but that Friday afternoon, my mother was teaching. And I don't know what had gotten into all of us students, but people were being very noisy. And, like, and I was like, oh, this is not gonna be good. Because my mother is a, was a, is a quiet person, but you push her to a certain point and she blows. And I could see what was happening. And I was in the back trying to keep a low profile. And I tried to warn them. I'm like, please, shh. You know what's going to happen? Shh. Nobody listened. And we got to that point when my mother lost it. And boy, were woes flying at us. She didn't say the word woe. But we were feeling woeful indeed. It went on for quite a while. And trust me, nobody did that to Mrs. Jeffrey ever again. We heard about the woes. So I take that feeling of having woes come at you out loud, and I bring that to Jesus, saying, woe to you, and it shuts me down. Because I need to eat, 
We all need to eat. And it's so definitive. Woe to you who are full, for you will be hungry. And so I want to offer a change of Jesus' words. And I don't like to change Jesus' words because I always have a fear of softening them. But I found this helpful. What instead of woe to you, we think about be careful when. Be careful when you are full. Because that fullness of earthly food will not satisfy you. Be careful when you are rich. Because the financial resources of this world can easily go away. And the only thing you can depend on is God. Be careful when people speak well of you, because that can go and come. And the thing that defines us is our love of, from God, as children of God, as saints of God. This, this is a teaching for the saints of God. And I found I hear it much better when I hear, be careful when. And I'd like to offer another, some other words for blessed. It's, and the words I offer, God is with you. God is with you when you are poor because yours is the kingdom of God. God is with you when you're hungry because you will be filled. And so when I hear this translation of both woe to you and blessed, I find myself moving into the Beatitudes more deeply because they are good teaching for the saints of God. As we walk through this life, being blessed, knowing that God is with us, and dealing with woes, knowing that we have to be careful with what we have because they can distract us from that love of God that is given so freely and is poured upon you. Now, at this point, I found myself thinking, well, I could just sit back, right? And I could just be careful, be careful with my riches. And I could say, blessed be the poor, God is with them. But Jesus does not let us off that easily. Oh, no, no, no. Jesus goes on. And I'm going to read that part of the gospel again. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other one as well. And if anyone tries to take away your coat, do not withhold it. And do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The blessings and the woes were just getting us started, just getting us warmed up. This teaching of love is hard. It is something I believe we struggle with all our lives. And it is our call as saints of God to live into this teaching. And why? Why would we try and love like this? Why when it is so hard? We do that because we are loved by God and God pours God's love onto us so freely, even with all our imperfections. And when we feel that love, we are called to love others in the same way. And so because of God's love, we love those who disagree with us, who are different from us, who abuse us. And just a reminder, staying in an abusive situation is not what God is calling us to do. That's, we can love from afar. When someone strikes us, we are called not to strike back, but to look for the common good and look for a different way of finding a solution. Because of God's love, we cannot dismiss the poor. 
We are called to engage with that person who begs from us every day. We are called to try and see the child of God within them and discern what God is calling us to do. Responding to God's love, loving others is hard work, but it is our call as the saints of God. And it requires attention, it requires attentiveness, it requires listening and prayer to discern how God will have us act. And we will get it wrong. We have gotten it wrong, we're getting it wrong, we'll get, we will get it wrong. And God knows that. But the work of the saints is to engage, engage this process of seeing how God would have us go out into this world and love as hard as it is, love. So my friends, my saints, my fellow saints, we are saints because God loves us. Loves us. We have the example of those going before us to know how to live as these saints. So go forth this week. You get another week. We always get another chance. No matter what you may face, whether it's worrying about the election on Tuesday, whether it's dealing with that person who we know wants to attack us, whether it is walking past that person who asks us for money every day. We go out knowing we are loved by God, knowing that we are called to be saints, knowing we will get it wrong, but trusting that the, God, the love that God pours in us will guide us. So let us freely reach for that love and go forth and be the saints of God that God longs for us to be. Amen. <laughs>